Welcome to Atlisco Puebla, Mexico, home of our sister company, Avipro Fabricantes, that manufactures the Bear Hawk kits. This is Atlisco, a city of 100,000 people, and has a wonderful climate being 5,800 feet above sea level, but still tropical. Volcano Popocatepetl is 30 kilometers in the distance, with its peak at 17,800 feet. Known as Atlisco de las Flores, or Atlisco of the Flowers, the town square is very beautiful with ornate benches and tile work. I'm Mark Goldberg of Bearhawk Aircraft. We'd like to introduce you to our manufacturing facility where the Bearhawk kits are made. The building that houses the kit factory is about 7,000 square feet and was originally a coffee roasting facility. When the coffee company outgrew the space, we rented the building starting kit production in 2001. Raw material, mostly 2024 T3 aluminum sheet and 4130 steel sheet and tubing, is shipped down to the factory to be turned into aircraft parts and quick build kits. The professionally hydroformed wing ribs and some machined parts are also sent to be incorporated into the kits. Here you see workers preparing 4130 tubing for painting, which helps make sure the correct wall thickness of tubing is used in a particular part. Production is organized into two basic lines with some overlap. The steel tube fuselage and other steel parts are made by one group of workers, and the aluminum spars and eventually wings, flaps, and ailerons are made by another team of workers. We begin with workers who build the wing spars. They use patterns and tooling developed for each of the three different models. After cutting the spar web blanks, they are then bent on a bending brake to form the web to the best fit for the ribs. The upper and lower flanges are formed on the brake at that time. Then the cap strips are drilled to the spar webs, and after the spars are completely assembled with Clecos, the spars parts are then corrosion protected using alumina prep, alodyne, and then shot with an epoxy strontium chromate primer before going to a special table for finish riveting. After the spars are riveted, then assembling the wing skeleton can begin on a different table which has all the rib positions fixed in place. The false spar that goes aft of the fuel tanks and the false ribs are located and riveted in place on the table. Once the wing skeleton is riveted, it goes into the vertical skinning jig. After leveling the bottom spar with adjustable supports, the next step is locating and riveting in place the nose ribs. Care is taken so the nose ribs are well aligned. Here you see the roller we use to form the leading edge of the wing skins. Then the skins are slid into place and tightened down for drilling. After all the skins are match drilled to the ribs and spar flanges, they are then removed for deburring and dimpling. Finally, the skin interiors and ribs are painted with the epoxy strontium chromate primer. Afterward, the wings are reassembled with Clecos and the finished riveting begins using all flush head rivets. Not a single round head rivet anywhere in the wind. Only flush head rivets are used on the wing skins. After we're finished riveting the wing skins, the wing is removed from the vertical jig for some final work. The aileron pocket ribs are installed and the pocket skin is pop riveted in place. Then the big holes are drilled in the wing ribs for the long flap torque tube and the aileron carry through cable that connects one wing's aileron bell crank to the bell crank in the other wing. Here you see our lead welder Oscar working on a steel part which goes in the wing, an aileron or flap support frame which goes from the front spar to the rear spar. 
The fuel tanks that go into the wing are made from 050 5052 H32 aluminum, both the tank skin and ribs. The ribs are formed over form blocks and then fitted into the bent tank skin. Then they are drilled together, then riveted using soft weldable rivets. After riveting, TIG welding is used to weld all the edges, seams, and over the rivets. The interior ribs have their bottom corners cut off so the fuel can flow, but they act as a baffle also to keep the fuel at the inboard low point of the tank. The inlet filler neck, outlet flanges, and drain flange on the bottom are welded on last. Finally, the fuel tanks are pressure tested for leaks. This is what a finished tank looks like. One worker's job is to make the ailerons and flaps. Juan begins by straightening all the ribs and making sure the flanges are 90 degrees to the web. Here you see Juan's work on an aileron during the course of a day. Ailerons and flaps are assembled in special jigs. Then after all the drilling and deburring of the holes, the flaps and ailerons are ready for riveting of the nose skin and finished to an advanced level of completion. After all the work is done, an aileron is put away. These are pictures of a finished flap. Now let's move to the fuselage side of kit production. Every piece of tubing on the fuselage and different parts have their end coped or fish mouthed by using tooling or patterns we have created for this purpose. Here you see a worker first marking the fish mouth on both ends of the tubing, which is already rough cut to length. Then he grinds down to the mark lines. Roberto is fitting tubing into the jig for the floor of the fuselage. After the floor and ceiling are tack welded, they are then placed into the big fuselage jig where the verticals and diagonals are fit and tacked. In the fuselage jig, all tubing is clamped in place to minimize distortion from welding. Every piece of tubing is located using a jig. Here you see workers placing a vertical tube in place. Then it is tack welded using a MIG machine. After everything is tacked together, then the finish welding begins. We are perhaps the only aircraft factory in the world that still oxygen acetylene welds our fuselages, also known as gas welding. This is the traditional way to weld 4130 chromoly tubing and steel dating back to the 1930s. The design engineer of the Bearhawk line of aircraft, Bob Barrows, believes gas welding to be a superior process for welding 4130 steel compared to the welding techniques considered more modern like TIG and MIG welding. It is certainly obvious that all those Cubs, Taylor Crafts, Irankas, etc. out on the flight line gas welded in the 1940s and 50s are still holding together well. This is what a fuselage looks like when it is finished welded and pulled out of the big jig. It is then placed on a rotisserie so that all the remaining parts can be welded in place. You see the wing attached fittings already welded onto the upper longerons. These images show Jose Luis welding the attached fittings for the rear tube of the horizontal stabilizer in the tail of the fuselage. Lots of little pieces of 4130 sheet welded to other pieces of 4130 to make the complete parts. These are some of the welding tips used for gas welding, along with some parts that will be welded to the fuselage. Jose Luis lights the torch and adjusts the flame to do some welding. This is what gas welding looks like up close. After a fuselage or part is finished welded, it is then sandblasted, 
blown clean with compressed air, then it is primered with a mil-spec epoxy strontium chromate primer, then top coated with a gray epoxy mil-spec top coat. This combination of primer and top coat is used on the U.S. Navy ships at sea. Here you see airfoil shaped ribs being made. These are used on the horizontal and vertical stabilizers. The elevators and rudders use flat ribs. The tail surfaces are assembled in a jig like the fuselage. After the parts are fit, they are tack welded using the MIG welder. Then the tail surface is removed from the jig for final welding, which is done with a TIG machine to minimize distortion. Here are stacks of finished tail surfaces ready for sandblast and paint. The firewall is made of stainless steel. The flange around it is made from 050 5052 aluminum, which is formed to the shape of the firewall using a stretcher shrinker. Then the flange is riveted to the stainless. Here are some of the parts that are included with the quick build fuselage. These are shock struts and varying levels of completion, along with some four-place Bearhawk seats. These are front and rear seats, as well as landing gear legs. Here you see the tooling that is used to make the landing gear legs, along with some finished tail surfaces. These are finished welded landing gear legs, ready for sandblast and paint. This landing gear is drying after final paint. Here are some four-place Bearhawk front seats, along with aileron and flap hinges, finished painted. First on the patrol, and then on the LSA, Bob Barrows went to aluminum rear windows. Then recently, Bob incorporated the same style of aluminum rear window into the Model B four-place Bearhawk. The window frame consists of a flat piece and a piece shaped the same except with a joggle in it to capture the plexiglass. The joggle is made in a bead roller with the die we machined. The two pieces are drilled to each other and riveted in every other hole that was drilled. The empty holes are used to attach the window frame to the fuselage side. Here you see Oscar working on an 0360 Type 1 Dynafocal engine mount. This is one of those mounts finish painted. This last engine mount is a Lycoming 540 type mount in process. This is how the finished wings are packed into the welded steel crates for shipping. While these crates are heavy and expensive to make, we have never had any damage while shipping these delicate wings and their aluminum skins. Here, one of our workers is wrapping up tail surfaces in bubble wrap to pack with other parts. We do a very thorough job wrapping and packaging parts so they arrive at the builder's workshop in good shape. These are complete kits, all packed up and ready to be loaded into the truck for the trip to Texas. Recently, we've started selling tubing packages for the basic fuselage cage. Each piece is bent, if needed, and fish mouth to fit. Each tube has a number, and we give a drawing showing each tube's location. This is what we call a basic fuselage. It is the fully welded cage with all the major attached fittings welded on using our factory tooling. Here we are loading up the finished kits and parts into the trailer for the trip to Texas. We hire some extra help to get the kits up into the trailer, each kit weighing at least 750 pounds. The long cardboard wrap packages are spar webs that we make up for scratch builders who also buy ribs. A good jump start for a scratch builder's wings. What you see here is the back of the trailer during unloading in Austin, Texas, where we store the kits for distribution to our customers. We hope you've enjoyed seeing a little of how we make the quick build kits at our factory for the Bearhawk line of airplanes. We try very hard to build the best quality kits. 
Over the years, we've had a lot of compliments on our welding and sheet metal work. While the quality of the kits is very important, equally important is how the planes fly. Bob Barrows is a very talented design engineer, and his planes are universally appreciated for their flying qualities. To learn more about our three models of airplane kits, please visit our website, bearhawkaircraft.com. Thank you for watching.